the 3 2 pitch. Fastball well hit right center. It is high, it is deep, and it is gone. That was Steve Finley's first year as a San Diego Padre. He became a pod after the blockbuster mega 12 player deal that was consummated on this date, December 28th, 1994. Take a look at the names on this thing. Every one of these players, save one, not only played in the big leagues, but starred at one point in the big leagues. Roberto Pettigini was a big time power bat prospect. Steve Finley and Ken Caminiti were kind of the cornerstones of the trade for San Diego, and they built an eventual, eventual rather, two-time and a Western Division champ and a National League pennant winner just a few short years later. Steve joins us on the Wednesday program. Steve, good to see you, man. Uh, tell me if you have any recollection as to where you may have been uh, and the phone call you received when you learned you were traded from Houston to San Diego on that day. Uh I do. I was uh, I was at my home in Colorado. Um, I just gotten back from snowmobiling in the back country, and uh, I walk into the house and everyone's staring at me. And I'm like, uh, "What's going on?" <laughs> and uh, they said, "Well, you've been traded." And my first question, I was like, <laughs> "With who?" I want to know who was going with me. And, uh, and when they said King Caminiti, I said, "I don't care where it is. I'm going to be happy." And uh, they said, "You're going to San Diego," and I was like. Perfect. I didn't see San Diego coming. I, I, never, I didn't even think about it. There have been rumors I was going to get traded maybe to Boston, uh, somewhere else in the East Coast. Uh, but when I found out it was San Diego and the names that were going with me, uh, I was really excited. First of all, I love the story about how you found out you were traded. It's a little different than today. You got the social media is how guys find out, but that's a great story. For me, uh, look, you were a lot of fun to watch as a kid. Who, who was your – you know, kind of inspiration at, when you were a child. Like, who did you watch? Who did you model your game after? Because I loved, you know, power, average. You ran the bases, played defense. You did everything well. You were one of those guys. Uh, who was your inspiration for your play? You know, I get that. that's probably one of the number one questions I got asked uh, throughout my career. And I got to be honest with you, I didn't follow baseball as a kid. Uh, I just played it. I loved it. I, I, every waking hour I wanted to play. Uh, but where I grew up in Kentucky, uh, I mean, look, you had uh, one game a week on a Saturday on, and I wasn't going to stay home on a Saturday. I was going to be out playing. And then there was Monday night baseball. Uh, both my parents were teachers and homework, and I was not allowed to really watch a lot of TV. And so uh, I got to watch very few games. Uh, the, not until I broke my leg in college of my freshman year that I got to sit at home. I had to. I would watch uh, Chicago Cubs during the day and uh, Atlanta Braves at night on WGN and WGN and, w and TBS. And uh, I never followed baseball until that point. Uh, it was pretty interesting, and I just loved playing it. So, um, But I had a lot of mentors after I got into the game. Uh, I had Cal Ripken, who really taught me so much on how to play every day, obviously, uh, and how to really uh, uh, understand defenses. And, and a lot of um, – uh, had a gold glover with the Orioles, really – taught me the ins and outs of the outfield uh, and how to, how to take control. So throughout my career, I had so many uh, impactful forces while I was playing, but I never really watched baseball as a kid. My first game I ever went to was uh, the seventh game of the World Series in 82. I was it with the Cardinals, 82. I yeah, Cardinals was, Brewers. I can't remember. Yeah, Cardinals Brewers, 82. That, that's yeah, I was at the seventh game. That's pretty interesting. Your broken leg as a freshman at Southern Illinois, uh, that is a recipe for weight gain, first of all. Holy cow. Uh, <laughs> that, that was never a problem for you as a player, Steve. Hey, I want, I want to go through some of these moments for you, man. I mean, I have so many memories of you making a major impact uh, in the West, in L.A., in Arizona, of course, in San Diego. Um, the biggest for me, maybe, I, I, because I remember watching this, uh, we were, I was working for the Padres at the time. We were watching the end of the 04 season unfold. You were a Dodger that year, and you hit a slam to wrap up a division title. On the list of accomplishments and single game memories for you, where does this rate? Yeah, that's right there at the top of the list. You know, it's an individual accomplishment uh, 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 and memories. Uh, I remember that like it was yesterday uh, I remember strolling to the plate uh, I just had a uh, I don't know a visualization uh, about two weeks before the end of the season that, that I wanted to hit a walk-off off of Dustin Hermanson who was their closer then to win the division 
And uh, uh, so when I strolled to the plate, it wasn't Dustin Hermanson. I think it was Wayne Franklin. And uh, I just remember enjoying the moment like I'd never really enjoyed a moment in big leagues before. Not focused. I just knew I'd, I'd been waiting for this moment. But, uh, and I didn't expect to hit a home run. I just wanted to end the game, and uh, it just kind of it worked out beautifully. Hey, what was what was the best team that you ever played for? Because again, you you played for so many good teams, and you were a big part of so many of those teams. What was the best group you were ever with? You know, that's a tough one. I got it's it's really hand in hand. Our '98 Padre team, uh, such a good clubhouse, and our 2001. Uh, Arizona Diamondbacks team the, the both clubhouses were I would take those clubhouses over any other that I played in it just it was an amazing group of guys uh, went to the World Series with the Padres and then obviously won it with the Diamondbacks uh, it was uh, it was amazing it was amazing and you know it's kind of funny where you showed me catching that ball right there I caught the exact same ball with the Diamondbacks in the same field in the same spot to go to the World Series Wow, that's uh, that's some video fun we can have. De looking forward to, uh, to down the road on that. <laughs> hey, I want to hit you with one Padre memory. And for guys that played on the 98 team, this might be hard to look at. Still maybe some PTSD. But, you know, the, the, the Mark Langston pitch, that cookie strike that was taken by Tino, and then he gets another pitch and hits the slam. We're showing it to you here. Sorry to do this to you, Finns. But I contend uh, that if that pitch is called correctly, there's a whole different outcome to that World Series. What do you think about that? I would sure like to see. Uh, you know, I think all of us were walking off the field. Tino Martinez, and I've been in his position for you. You know the pitch is a strike, and you're turning to walk to home, back to the dugout, and uh, all of a sudden you hear a ball, and you try to recorrect. And uh, he did that in that moment. I remember him stepping away and then getting back in the box. And, uh, you know, it, it, there's pivotal moments in every World Series, and, and that was definitely one for that 98 team. That was, the Yankees team that year, they were going to be tough to beat. They were probably one of the best teams in the history of baseball up and down the lineup. Uh, but I would like to have seen it gone more than four games, and, and that game really could have turned it around for us and maybe took it deeper into the series. Boy, you guys were pretty good that year, too. I mean, that front three, that rotation yes, you guys we had, Ashby was hot down the stretch. Hitchcock was the best starter in the big leagues down the stretch, and Kevin Brown was an animal back then. I mean, that Pods team was great. Fins, we could uh, we could visit with you for a lot longer than what we've had, but we appreciate the, uh, the memory lane stroll that you've taken on the anniversary of the trade, and uh, maybe we can do this again down the road. Thanks for being with us.